Was... Yeah, well, I don't know what er you know what time or era they're growing up in, but maybe that's the difference. Me and my brother have seven years apart. That's why he's more of a father figure to me. But uh, I see these kids getting upset. Their brother's doing better than them. It's like, gosh, if your family's doing, if you're out and your other half of your family's doing, you got to be, you got to be stoked about that. You know, if I won, my brother won. If he won, I won. And we were equally happy. And um, I seen Bruce the other day at Pipe, and I'm like, hey, Bruce, just think. Yeah. We're bummed, you're bummed, you lost. But hey, your brother's still going, let's cheer him on, man. I mean, you can't be that bummed. And I, I think I might have got a little bit to him because he kind of looked at me and I just told him, chew on it. It's, <laughs> your career is way too early for you to start whining, you know what I mean? And especially what he's already accomplished. But not just those brothers. I don't know how other brothers are, but from what I, I don't know if they have the relationship that me and my brother have. I'd like to think we have a really special one. Like I said, he's taught me a lot, and he's, you know, I, all I know of him and ever is just the smile on his face, the happiness that, you know, everybody has their problems here at home, but I know whenever he does or and when I try to socialize, I just like to be myself and be the happy person that I am. and and. That's what he gives to me. Talk about um, some of your other competitors. Talk about Jerry Lopez and your relationship with Jerry. Oh, there's another, um, there's another father figure. You know, he's he's older than Mike, and Mike has looked up to him forever. And I've watched him since you know, two, three, four, five years old, growing you know from Ala Moana to Pipeline, and he's just more or less words of wisdom, and. He's the guy that taught me about being down. And hold your chin up, hold your head up high, you know, life can't be that bad. And just to take the good with the bad, the bad with the good. Um, he, Lopez was, a, he's the guru. He's the, what do you want to say? He's just an incredible teacher and he knows how to affect you in a way that you absorb what he has to say. You know, you don't forget it the next day. And that's the kind of influence he's had on me. And it's great because I had to, some of the craziest sessions out there at Pipeline with him. And just knowing who he is, what he is, and what he's done for us. And just, you know, that guy's a madman as far, even though he's a guru. You know, he's so quietly crazy. People don't know it, you know. I've snowboarded with him, surfed with him, and now uh, it's just interesting the lifestyle he lives and leads, and and the persona that he takes on. Let's talk about his surfing. From what you say, surfing. Um, well, you know, if there was another explanation for style, the, name, the word would be Jerry. You know what I mean? They show put his word down in the dictionary for style. That guy has some style, okay? Something that a lot of people forgot about or maybe don't even know about. But but his surfing to, is, in one word is just stylish. Stylish and strong and uh, really precise. You don't see the guy make too many bad choices surfing. Just fucking wonderful, mate. Um, talk about some of the blokes that you surf with, like uh, Duma and, and uh, okay, let, let's talk about um, Damien Harden. Duma. Duma's beautiful. You just love to hate. I'm sure they say that about me too, but growing up, he was a, growing up was Barton Lynch, you know, as far as me, actually it was Tom Carroll, me trying to see how am I, am I going to get in this game, you know, because yeah. they're the heavies, you know, I, we didn't have any guys from Hawaii, you had Michael, Dane, and Hans, basically, you know, you had the Randall Kims, Louis Ferreras, Vince Kleins, and, you know, besides Bertelman, all trying to make their way, but uh, there wasn't one goofy that I could relate to, as far as competing, 
So I grew up watching Tom Cowell at Rocky Point. Then was Bart, and then there's this Duma guy. And he was more down to my age level, but his, a surfing level, he was, I feel, a lot more superior than I was at the time. You know, so, and I'm watching this guy, and my first take of him was, um, Stubbies, I don't know what year that was, 83 or 84, back then, and he had this backhand attack out that Burley that was just lighting the place up, and um, he had a big heat with Barton, and I, I'm not too sure if he got him or not. I don't know if it was the semis or the finals, but um, that was my first take on it on him, and then in the, uh, little did I know in the years to come, he was gonna, you know, I'm gonna be battling with him, and we had a attitude, I had an attitude like, fuck you, oh, screw you. And he was so classic, he didn't give a sh shit about, you know, Hawaiians, Hawaii, and um, race, or I don't care who you are. And he was like, fuck, screw you too, Derek. You know what I mean? But without saying it. And it was, and we were kind of like that with everyone, but it's amazing how the world turns around, because he's like, He's our best friend now, you know what I mean? Uh, we grow, we mature, but during that time frame, you know, to me, Damien was a competitor on the other side of the draw for me. Was, you know, you don't realize what a person is until you take a little time to know him. So I didn't really get to know him until the last 10 years, but we've covered a lot of ground in that time, but I love the guy, beautiful person. Great surfer, good competitor. Tom Carroll? Tom Carroll, one of the only surfers I can see eye to eye with. <laughs> We're like same size. You know, we like, he's thick and stocky. I like to think we're pretty foundationally strong and um, brings out the best in you. You know, I had the cra I had craziest, those two guys are just incredible heats. You know, and I, like I said, me, now I know how the kids feel when they beat someone that they don't think they can beat, you know, or someone that they feel is on a superior level. But those people bring out the best in you, and that's what Tom did to me. He, um, he took it to a pipeline in ways that no one else did, didn't he, really? He, I mean, um, he no, I wouldn't proud. say no one else. Well, there's only one person that will take it to Tom, and that's the late Ronnie Burns. Okay, that, that guy... I love you, Tom, but we all know about RB, but you, don't get me wrong, you're a bad boy. <laughs> no, tell you, he, the Tom, took it to some levels, definitely that, you know, beyond comprehension. The only guy that I compare would be RB. I love you, Red Dog. And, and, and that big snap he did at Pipe just blew people's minds when he did it. Oh, yeah, with Ronnie's or Tom's. No, Tom. Yeah, because no, Ronnie had did that in an H pack event years prior, but it was uh, it's it was crazy. It's like they're hot dogging pipeline, you know. And um, obviously that's that's a turn that'll stand out. I got a lot of things that I still have a hard time going to sleep about, but we won't bring them up. <laughs> Talk about Ronnie Burns because he was Mr. Pipeline for quite a while, wasn't he? Oh, he he is forever, you know. That guy's a living legend. He he set the standards, you know. That guy It's funny, people like to respect me in a way that I feel he should be respected. I, I give thanks and praise for the recognition that they give me, but when I think about it, I just say to myself, I can't explain the legacy of Ronnie to every person that tells me, but I just go, oh man. If you seen my buddy, you guys would know what heavy is. Thanks for all the accolades and the accomplishments, but basically I've had Ronnie paddle by me out at pipe with his tongue hanging out like, <laughs> you wanna come with me, Derek? I'm going back here and I just back up. You go get him, boy. And you know, that guy's, he'll cover a lot of ground with his arms and he was that heavy. I'd, I'd be sitting in the, behind a pit and he'd make me feel like I was in the channel. Cool. Um, 
Dane. Dane. Someone I looked up to as a kid. Still look up to him now, you know. The stories I heard, basically my brother taught him how to surf, how to paddle, you know. <laughs> my, my Mike told me stories, you know, growing up in Waikiki where, you know, Mike said, I taught the guy how to paddle, but I love that guy. Um, mean, mean mana he got, you, you know, to everyone. I know all the Hawaiian surfers growing up, especially the native ones, you know. He was what Hawaii and surfing represented. And um, big following. I was fortunate to compete against them a few times. And, you know, I, I don't like to take on beating them, but getting to compete and having to even step up to that level. Um, family man, grew up with our family. You had the Kailoas and you had the hoes. They stayed at our house, we stayed at theirs. That's what he means to us. Okay, uh, Sonny. Sonny. Sonny, a little version of Dane. Um, watched him grow up from the west side. Same type of situation I grew up in. Rough and tumbled, you know. I finished high school at least because that was something that I prioritized. But something that, you know, it wouldn't have matter if I see the route that he had to take, you know. Um, Growing up with broken boards and just ripping the shit out of them at Makaha. Um, getting older, traveling on the road with me and Mike, us being, uh, you know, uncle, father figure. You know, dad was a lot of father figures to a lot of these kids. And um, watch him grow from a boy to a man. Um, incredible surfer. You know, bullshit. You want to talk raw ability. That's what, that was one guy that could surf without training. And when he trained, people found out what he was like. Uh, I love him like my brother. It's like to congratulate him with all the success that he has had. Uh, another family man. He's kind of unfortunately come unstuck, you know. It's a bit yeah, old. shit happens like that, you know. It's only unstuck. I told you, there's no one to blame but yourself. Okay, um, he'll he'll come back. St he'll stick. You know, I know what he went through, and that's just a. Everything happens for a reason. And on the other, women will do a lot of things to your mind. And you know, I'm not saying that he had any bad women, but and we won't go into the situ circumstances that he's in. But that's life, and life's reality. And you only make it you. You only make life what it is. You got no one to blame but yourself. Okay, talk about the um, Kelly Slater. Oh, incredible. Watched him as a little termite uh, when they were trying to pick him up. You know, Gotcha and Quicksilver were battling for him at the time. And I was like, you know, the kids are still growing, but that, one, that was one kid that was just blowing minds at, you know, 13, 14, 15. And um, watch him grow into to be the you know the best surfer in the world. Um, so much respect for him. I just it's a funny thing when all the when everything was happening and they people were, thought he was done. You know there was a couple throughout the time when he took his break. You know when Kelly took his so-called break, right? When he let people win world titles, basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> you know. I knew he wasn't done. I knew he was going to come back and win world titles. And I know he's going to win another one. He's that good. But he's, he's even a better person, you know. That guy, I, he'd do what he'd do anyway. But when I broke my leg in G-Land, um, I had a couple of people actually paddle by me. And I was crying. I needed help, you know. My leg was chopped in half. and. That guy came from out of the lineup. Would have been the best day all year. See, it was absolutely perfect. But he seen trouble, and that guy came and babysat me. You know, put me on the boat, took me to the land. Between him and Sonny, they just nurtured me. You know, wouldn't let me look at my cut. Cleaned it. Fucking. That meant a lot to me. You know, more than anything. You know. Yeah, he's a great surfer. He's a beautiful person. I love you too, Kelly.
I've got footage of that too, which is pretty amazing. I remember that part. Um, so, uh, let's just go back to pipe, because this is where you really made your mark. So, how important it is to win the pipe masters, like? Well, you know, it's important for us kids. I mean, growing up, I wanted to win it. Didn't know how I was going to win it. If I was going to win it, or when I was going to win it. But, to me, it puts a mark on that stamp, okay? It, it, it certifies the pipe surfer. Yeah. You went in pipe, you know, that's a world title in itself. As far, whether it's against the world or for yourself, that's a huge accomplishment for me. I mean, we live, for me, I've always said I live and die for pipe. I literally live and die and uh, it's crazy. Because we get hurt there, but we're gonna go right back and do it all over again, knowing that it's life threatening. You know, we've lost one of the beautifulest people last year, you know, Malik. Experienced surfer. That's what pipe is. Pipe kills, okay? Pipe gives so much, so much to offer, and it, it can take everything away. And uh, pipe for me is life, you know? I live for pipe. Describe um, uh, what it is like to get the best barrel out there. Describe, you know, uh, you, the perfect time. Perfect, time, perfect timing. At each time it changes, you know. I've had so many best barrels. Which one's the best? The feeling is the feeling is watching it come in. That's where it starts. The corduroy lines coming off the second reef, you know. Getting in position, looking inside, knowing what house to line up with, you know. Worst thing is being too far on the shoulder on a killer 10, 12 foot wave. Positioning's everything for me. Then the heart pumps, the adrenaline starts flowing. And then you got your mind made up and people know it. They're going, well, I'm not getting that wave, that guy is. And it's the same thing from the outside looking in. Even if I'm, I'm going, well, that's not my wave. That's his. Positioning. Coming from, I hate to drop in on people at Pipe. It's the worst. Unless they're getting all the waves. <laughs> but, positionally, positional, timing, precise. Um, adrenaline rush is unexplainable. I've been asked that. A million times it's the hardest one to explain it's it's breath so breathtaking and mind-blowing words can't even describe it as far as I'm concerned it's something you need to experience for yourself and getting you know like to stand sit in, in a, or stand in a, in a barrel like that as a, for me the best feeling in the world you know besides being with my family and you know life is fruitful you take it all, but self-accomplishments, to me, standing in a 10, 12, 15 foot barrel at pipe is, that's what, that's what it's all about. Best thing about surfing? Best thing about surfing is knowing where it came from, or knowing how it was introduced to yourself, so innocent, and taking on such a a role that people don't realize where it started. Having fun, enjoying, having the worst day of your life, jumping in the water, whether it's one foot or 10 or 20 foot, surfing, coming back in, you're coming in with a smile. That's what surfing is all about. Um, and finally, um, what's, how's pro surfing changed over the last 20 years? Obviously you've been through, how long did you actually tour? I toured 17, 18 years, you know, I did it since 81 to 97. So I don't really care to do the math right now, but quite some time. Um, and I watched the progression, it's crazy, because 
like I said, Mike and the whole crew, Sean, everybody, Rabbit, MR, they laid the foundation. They got paid minimum. The 80s, early 90s, oh, we were killing it. They, they were like, now, 2000s, jumped up, you know, 100, 200%. These kids are making money. Still, you know, as we feel with all the sports out there, we should be making more. But they're killing it right now, you know. You got that handful. You got the first five handful, then the next five and the next five. But that top five, you know, they're literally making millions. And um, that's how it's changed. We didn't uh, talk about Andy. Oh. How could we forget that little uh, freak? Andy, proud of him. Watch them start the tour. Watch him can't make a heat, you know? Watch him grow as a little boy. Him and Bruce, you know? Bruce would spank him all the time growing up in um, their amateur days, I guess, as far as events, you know, competitive-wise, but then watching him go through a frustration ready to quit the tour, literally coming out of his mouth. And it was funny because me, I always, I don't want to say discredit, but I always knock these Hawaiians because they give up. It's easy to give up because, you know, we're so used to good waves. On the road is not good waves. But you guys are good surfers. You guys can still make things happen, you know. There's a handful of them that should be qualifying that aren't. But there's a good handful that's, I'm stoked that are still, you know, leading the charge. And then Andy was in that position, ready to give up, literally. And then, you know, I don't know where he found it, how he found it, but he found the formula. And once he won those two back-to-back -back in Huntington, uh, qualifier and uh, CT, I think he found something with it deep in himself. And, um, you know, the rest is history. Incredible surfer, beautiful kid, so much respect for him. And, you know, I just love the respect they show for not just me and my brother, but the elder statesmen that, um, you know, those guys got some, they got some style and some heart. You know, Andy and Bruce, love them like my kids. Proud of them, damn proud of them. Andy's come on the scene um, um, at a very difficult time because you got Kelly Slater, so it's created this incredible rivalry. Oh, yeah, not a difficult time, the best time. You talk about people bringing the best out of people. Oh, that. The only thing lacking in their rivalry is boxing gloves, okay? Those guys are like two boxers, man, two champion fighters that come out head to head all the time. and. God, surfing couldn't have a better time to have Andy Irons, I can tell you that much, boy. That guy makes Kelly shake. And he, apparently... And uh, likewise. He did, he, he did, he did that. Uh, did you hear much about what was going on in the water that afternoon? Because I heard mm -hmm. there was a lot of anger and aggression. Oh, oh get what? You want to hear some s smash talk, huh? I'm sure there was. I, I, I could only imagine. I could only imagine. I'm sure you'll I'll hear it right from the horse's mouth. But it worked. Oh, he's yeah. He's angry and he fucking... Yes. He, he, he fucking... Ugh. And that's what it's about. And that's what I love about that guy. And it's not just... It's not all mouth. It ain't the guy that's talking shit and not doing it. That guy walks it, talks it, and he walks it. Just talk about that grand final, because that was a Oh, incredible. Incredible, incredible final I've ever seen, to tell you the truth. I can't remember another one like it. I don't know. You've seen a lot of events. Can you tell me? I've seen some good days, but I haven't seen a final down the wild like that. Right. that the two guys weren't even in the contest. Robin, whoever the other guy was. <laughs> That's how heavy that final was. Those guys didn't even exist. I don't know. You tell me. You're looking like maybe they did. Corey and Rob were on a different scale that day. I'm sorry, guys. I, you know, great. I'm a goofy footer too, but 
It was it was a friggin' Tyson fight. Out it there was between two blokes, and there was two two fucking guys. <laughs> though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was like that, you know. Are we good? Yeah. Last one, last question. Tell me about Aloha. Being a Hawaiian. Aloha. Living. That's that's the Aloha. You know, it's amazing because I know people see a lot more of it now. You know, in Hawaii. Before they, you know, they thought Hawaii, North Shore, or er, er, the Hui. But the Hui has a lot of aloha, you know. Aloha is love. It's what you bring is what you get, you know. My dad was Mr. Aloha. It didn't matter what color, race, country, planet you're from. He loved to come sit people down, get them together, go catch them fish, squid, bring out the hat, get a dollar from everyone, go buy the beer, you know. Aloha is just love and support for everyone and uh, making people feel like they're they're wanted and welcomed not 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 wanted not not welcome you know you got you come here here let me take care of you and yeah you know, I've growing up I feel I'm learning I'm still learning about Aloha and I'm from Hawaii <laughs>